good morning, family. Thanks for joining me today. Today is the first Sunday of Epiphany. Epiphany is the celebration of the Magi, the wise men who came to worship Jesus. And as the name suggests, Epiphany is a sudden awareness, a realization, if you will, that Jesus did not come only for the people of Israel, but for all the world. Jesus is the Savior for everyone. Jesus is God's way of telling us that he loves each and every one of us, no matter what, right? But today is also the Sunday when we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. So today, let's shift away from a baby in Bethlehem to Jesus as a grown man on the banks of the Jordan River, okay? Let's look at Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, where we hear about John the Baptist and his encounter with the Savior of the whole world. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized there by John. John didn't want to do it. This isn't proper, he said. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you. But Jesus said, please do it, for I must do all that is right. So then John baptized him. After his baptism, as soon as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down in the form of a dove. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, and I am wonderfully pleased with him. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. So we say, thanks be to God. Some 70 years ago in a lab at Harvard University, researchers discovered something fascinating about ants. When an ant dies, the other ants in the colony transport its lifeless body to the ant colony's refuse pile, where other dead ants and junk have been discarded. After weeks of experimentation in a lab filled with the rotting odors of dead things, researchers discovered that the smell that indicates an ant has died is something called oleic acid. One experiment revealed that when oleic acid was applied to a living ant, Worker ants immediately carried the living ant off to the trash heap. Then, after cleaning itself, the discarded ant was able to return from the garbage pile and resume its life in the colony. Other tests revealed that sometimes when ants were swabbed with oleic acid, they voluntarily self-isolated themselves to the garbage pile. They relegated themselves to the trash heap until the odor was removed or it disappeared. In other words, the living ants appeared to be dead. One researcher referred to these befuddled creatures as zombie ants. Now, according to a recent study of Argentine ants, ants produce both life chemicals and death chemicals throughout their lifetimes. But when an ant dies, it stops emitting the life pheromones. And with nothing to mask the stench of oleic acid's death chemical, The other ants know it's time to bury their fallen comrades. Now, obviously, there are no literal ants in today's reading from the Gospel of Matthew. But there is a powerful lesson to be learned here. But first, let's back up a bit. Centuries before Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, some 600 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah wrote some prophecies that we call the Servant Songs. One of those songs, Isaiah chapter 42, speaks a word of hope to God's people. I am the Lord, Isaiah wrote. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. The prophet wrote to God's people while they were living in Babylonian exile. They had been carried off. They felt discarded. The people turned away from God and were now enslaved by foreigners and living in a foreign country. But the prophet spoke words of hope into the darkness of exile. Even in the midst of suffering, even when they were forcibly removed from their homeland, 
God declared that his people were beloved. They were chosen and named. If we go even further back in history, during the boyhood days of King David, we find these words in Psalm 29. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. This psalm is a song about God's presence during the storms of life, when the floodwaters rise, when the fires rage, when the earth quakes. God is still God. God is in the storm and sits enthroned above the flood. Floods, fires, and earthquakes are terrifying events, and yet the psalmist takes this fear and uses it to ascribe glory to God. Even in the middle of all these events, when we feel forsaken and alone, God is present. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Even when terrifying events happen all around us, God declares his peace and his blessings to his people. Now, if we fast forward to the book of Acts, we can find Peter preaching to the centurion, a Roman named Cornelius. According to custom and law, Jewish people were not allowed to enter the houses of Gentiles. But God sent a vision to Peter of unclean animals, and he said, What God has made clean, do not call unclean. Now, Peter tells Cornelius and his family about the life of Jesus. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. This is restoration and renewal. This is radical inclusion. There is no human outside the reach of God's love. Jesus died and rose again for all of us, each and every one of us, to be gathered unto God, not only the Jews, but people of every nation. Isaiah's prophecy was fulfilled in Jesus. Even the great preacher, John the Baptist, hesitated to step into the role to which God called him. Matthew tells us that when Jesus showed up to be baptized, John didn't want to do it. This isn't proper, he said. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you. The last of the great prophets, John the baptizer, hesitated. He considered himself to be unworthy when compared with Jesus. But Jesus answered him, Please do it, for I must do all that is right. Of course, this was the right thing to do. How do we know? Well, when Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens split open and a voice from heaven declared these words, This is my son, my beloved son, and I am wonderfully pleased with him. So do you see a theme here? In baptism, in that holy sacrament, God always declares, This is my beloved child, and I am wonderfully pleased with them. God gives us new life. God gives us redemption, a path paved with love. He gives us renewal, belonging, and acceptance. God reaches to those who are lost, those who doubt their belonging, and those who doubt their worth. God declares that they have a place in the kingdom of God. That's the good news today. Actually, that's the best news, isn't it? God wipes off our death. God brushes off our unworthiness. And he gives us value and worth so that we can live full and productive lives. But the problem is that many of us act like the zombie ants, don't we? We think we're already dead. We think we're relegated to the trash pile. We live like we're excluded, like the exiles, like the Gentiles, and like John the Baptist. We doubt our place in God's kingdom. There are voices all around us, little voices, loud voices, external and internal voices that all tell us in some form or fashion, you're not good enough. You're faking it. You're not worthy. You don't belong. And like the ants I told you about a moment ago, we drag ourselves off to the trash heap, letting the glow of the light and life and love of God fade. Even John the Baptist doubted his worth and his ministry. John hesitated. He told Jesus that he got it wrong and that Jesus should be the one baptizing him instead. 
And like the ants that produce both life chemicals and the death chemicals, those death voices don't go away. But the voice of God, the voice that thunders over the waters, the voice that breaks open the heavens, declares, This is my child, the beloved, with whom I am wonderfully and well pleased. So what does this mean? It means that our job is to listen and to believe. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Good and loving Lord, in the water of baptism, you were revealed as God's own Son, and in the Spirit's power, you walked upon this earth. And we ourselves, washed in living water and knowing forgiveness, walk in your footsteps through your Spirit's power. God above us, God with us, God within us, God flowing from us. Today we praise your glorious name. We pray today for those who are vulnerable to illness and disease. We pray for everyone in pain and for those who are tired. We pray for people who are lonely and those who are uncertain. And we ask for your help for those who need direction today. We continue to pray for peace. Lands and lives are scarred by war. Communities are terrorized by violence. Neighborhoods are torn apart by drugs. And relationships are destroyed by politics. We need your healing and your peace. We pray for those who are afraid. We pray for peace for anyone and everyone feeling stress, pressure, and uncertainty. We ask for justice. Fill us with your spirit to work for peace, to bring justice, and to offer grace and mercy. Forgive us for getting frustrated. Forgive us for losing hope. Help us to use words of peace. And now using the words debts and debtors, let us pray with boldness the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As always, thank you for joining me today. I really do hope these words were helpful to you. And if they were, will you like, review, and share this message? If you leave a good review, it will help other people to find and to benefit from these thoughts and these prayers. By the way, if you have a prayer request or if you have a need, please leave a message in the comments section and be assured that I will be praying for you and for your need. Now, this week your job is to love at least three people and make sure at least one of them doesn't deserve it. Why? Because everyone needs love and everyone needs to know that God loves them no matter what, right? Remember, with Jesus, we always, always, always have hope. Now, receive these words of benediction today. May the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen? Amen.